<laughs> if you were robbed and you had your life savings drained, you would, of course, call the police. Yeah, but one Utah senior citizen decided it might be time to get Gephardt because she knows who took all of her money. But law enforcement seems powerless to be able to help, and that's when you got involved and started looking into yeah, it. I found this is certainly not a unique case for this woman. Shocking numbers when you get into them, but, and really alarming to hear just even in her case, hundreds of thousands of dollars allegedly swindled from this 86-year-old woman. More alarming, the alleged thief is the woman's own son. She says she wants to see her son and daughter-in-law punished, and she wants her money back. But she says the police cannot help her. I feel like I've been, I guess, violated. By your son? Yeah. This 86-year-old woman is today struggling to get by. Her life savings, gone. Her home, gone. And she says it was all taken slowly by her son and daughter-in-law, who she says she had trusted to help her manage her finances. I didn't know what was going on. There is evidence, piles of it. Using a power of attorney, checks were written from her accounts, checks made out to cash, and checks made out to her grandson. And receipts show thousands of dollars spent on things like furniture and car payments, none of it for her. This senior says she would regularly ask her daughter-in-law about her finances. How's my finance doing? She'd say, fine, fine, I took her word for it. Fine it was not. But it was not until she checked her bank account with the help of other family members that she learned she was broke. More than $300,000 gone. This is family. That I know. Off. I know, yeah. And I never dreamed she was doing this to me. Devastated, this 86-year-old woman asked me to investigate. We found that she did what just about any of us would do when we believe we have been robbed. She turned to law enforcement. But according to a public records request, this case is too much he said, she said. Witnesses interviewed by police say the 86-year-old woman wanted her money spent, and thus her local prosecutor is declining to file charges. It's very sad stories. Nan Mendenhall is the director of Adult Protective Services for Utah. She says, unfortunately, this woman's story does not surprise her. This 2010 study revealed that $1 million per day is swindled from Utah seniors. And here in Utah, 57% of all money stolen from seniors is theft done by a family member. Primarily the perpetrators are the children of the seniors. That is shocking to me. I can't imagine ripping off my mom and dad. Yeah, and what, what we found is closer the relationship to the senior, the more ways that they are actually exploiting them. Just grates against our sense of moral justice. But despite the staggering numbers, very few of these types of fraud cases are ever actually prosecuted. Salt Lake County District Attorney Sim Gill says he is working to change that. I'm absolutely offended by it. Since being elected, Gill has implemented a white-collar crime division in his office. It is a paradigm shift because for years, exploiting seniors has been largely viewed as a civil matter rather than a criminal one. We have to retrain our thinking. We have to retrain our, uh, uh, our law enforcement to let them know these are cases of high priority for us. I'm afraid of him. I'm really frightened of him. As for this senior, she says she is frustrated that another DA, the one in her county, will not be prosecuting on her behalf. She is instead suing her son and daughter-in-law on her own. She hopes to recoup the money she says was taken from her by the people she trusted most. Yeah, and in the spirit of innocent until proven guilty, we did opt to disguise the woman's face to protect the identity of her son and daughter-in-law that she accuses of exploiting her. I did attempt to call them. My calls were not returned. I also talked to aging services at length about the best way for seniors to try to avoid this type of theft from their own kids. They gave me a couple of tips. Uh, number one, use a third party. Maybe talk to an estate planner, somebody besides your family members who you can trust with this kind of information. Also, when you do get around to power of attorney, because in some cases this is an important thing, uh, you know, that, that your family members can maybe take over some of your finances, limit that power of attorney to maybe some of the accounts, uh, and not all of them, don't give them access to maybe all of your property. And then most importantly, and this I heard time and time again from everybody I talked to, checks and balances. Uh, don't put one person onto your account. Put your sibling, all your children onto your account, uh, siblings onto the account, so you guys can check each other. And if something starts to seem a little funky, you can you know, call each other out on it a little bit. Those are some tips from agent services. They say hopefully that and awareness can try to cut down on this type of fraud.
And it just strikes you as being so unfair because you're supposed to take care of your parents at that stage of their life, not take advantage. And you know, they, a lot of it I don't think begins as real evil. A lot of it begins as maybe they don't expect mom and dad to live all that long and maybe their money should be diversified. Oh, and then mom and dad live a little longer and, and now we're out of money. So uh, you know, just some things to do to make sure the people who earned this money can have the money taken care of them into their years. Okay, Matt, thanks.